YouTube Oz, it going the Godows is back. We're talking about the Chargers today, what to watch, what we can expect a lot more. I think there's some misleading things, some things that people kind of get wrong when they talk about the LA Chargers. We'll break all that down. You can find a playlist on our channel with this series with all the teams that we have done. Make sure to comment on which team I should do next. Top three things to expect, what we could be watching for. Number three. One of those misleading things. I don't think they're actually a run heavy or run first team, even though people believe that because the hires that they have made, uh, Jim Harbaugh and his background, what he did at Michigan, Greg Roman with you know when he was the offense coordinator of the Ravens and he brought in a couple running backs from the Ravens. So I guess where I understand where people get that, but it does not mean they are just going to be this ground and pound team you know run to open up the pass open play action pass which is kind of their their background uh hardball and we're going to talk more about that in this video but he is going to he's not going to waste talent you know especially justin herbert they will pass the ball plenty i do view them as a pass first team still but that's something we're watching we're going to see how this works like how does that mentality you know that background of run heavy offensive coaches mesh with having a all-out pass elite potential quarterback in Justin Herbert um, so that's something definitely to watch but I, I think people are wrong when they think about this team's going to be run 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 or run run open up the pass it, it, a lot of the time teams do that because they have to do that and they don't have to do that when they have a guy like Justin Herbert so that'll be something to watch on how they divide that up, what's the game plan? Are they gonna, sure there might be weeks where they are just a physical pound the football depending on matchup, you know, as any team should. You know, if you're going against a team that just cannot stop the run, of course any team should, you know, attack that for sure. So almost a good thing. Like they're able to do that and do it at a high level if needed, but I do think the team runs through the passing game in Justin Herbert. Uh number two they have potential to have an elite offense line. I think people realize that this offense line is looking more complete. They're getting it together. Together, They had a big draft pick in Joe Alt. But what I think people do not talk about is that they could have a top-tier offensive line. Uh, I mean, look at the coaching changes, You know, the system change, scheme change, I should say. That helps it alone. But offensive, look at the offensive line. A legit tackle duo, Rashawn Slater, who I loved coming out of Northwestern, just about staying healthy, but he should play, if he's on the field, he should play at a very high level. Joe Alt should play at a pretty solid level right off the bat, uh, and he'll be very solid for this group. Uh, I like the guard uh, duo. Zion Johnson should be solid. You know, he's going to continue to progress. Uh, Jamari Sawyer has been very, very good, has been proven to be a steal of a pick a couple years ago out of Georgia. Um, and then they add Bradley Bozeman at center, who should really fit this Greg Roman scheme actually very well. Um, yeah, they got a bunch of offensive linemen to me that fit any scheme, and they should they should be able to play very well, young, improving. And just think about this team. You know, they have a great quarterback, and they should have a pretty damn good or better offensive line. And yeah, people kind of knock them because, and including myself, because maybe the receiver unit isn't fully there. Uh, you know, do they have a star running back? Maybe not really. I don't know if people are really worried about that. Um, and then defensively, yeah, the interior D line and, you know, linebacker could be some questions there. Corner could get a little better. So people go, eh, there's too many holes. Or if you don't say they're holes, maybe there's too many question mark spots, you know, so maybe they're not there yet. But then, but look at the staff, look at the quarterback and look at the offensive line. Those three things alone can make teams a threat. They can just those things alone can make these teams a threat. So, I think we'd talk more about this offensive line. People should talk more about it because we know the coaching staff should be good, led by Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, and we know Justin Herbert is legit and could be even better than than he has been actually. And then you factor in this O line, it, it can make them. It's gonna be a team that teams don't really want to face. They don't really want to face like they're a legit threat every single week, even though they aren't the best team on paper. Um, you know, in the in the league. So we'll see. But that offensive line can make them that much better. Uh, the number one, and I kind of touched on this a tiny bit, but Jim Harbaugh will not let talent go to waste. That is the key thing here. I think Brandon Staley did that. He did that with guys like, even though he's playing, was playing great, Justin Herbert, but players on the offensive line. Uh, you look at defense, look at Derwin James, players like that. Joey Bose has been a little disappointing. I know he's been beat up, so that's probably it. But Harbaugh 
takes advantage of having talented players. We saw it at Michigan. We saw it in his career in the NFL. He will get the most out of Justin Herbert and company, all these guys. So, And then looking at the, the defense, I, the Chargers were a big team for this series because I wanted to talk about more than three things. But the defense, that's another um, something else to watch too. It should be a lot different in that being a good thing under Jesse Minter away from Brandon Staley. Uh, coming from Michigan, that's kind of where the NFL is heading. More of those college-style defenses, you know, kind of trying to match these new new school offenses, the high high-powered passing attacks. But it could it'll be a lot like former Michigan defensive coordinator Mike McDonald's who. who who Mike McDonald, who his defense kind of just took over the NFL, and he got a head coaching job in Seattle. So we should see some similarities from Minter's defense with that, some simulated pressures, which is kind of where, where the NFL is heading, and more zone coverage. I think we'll see a bit of cover three. Uh, should get the most out of some legit defensive players, so it's not really just hardball here, but um, they – he, he won't let this talent go to waste. And it felt like it was going, that was like the biggest thing under Staley, like the biggest talking point. Like when, when discussing the charters and how disappointed they were, like why were they disappointing? Because well, yeah, in-game coaching decisions was pretty brutal, but it just felt like really good talent was going to waste. And that was kind of like the number one reason where it was obvious that Staley was not working out. So uh, hardball is not going to let that happen. So this team, for everything I just explained, it could be more of a threat than maybe people think by looking at them on paper. Uh, but some players to watch. How about Josh Palmer? Not being talked about enough. I think people are talking about Lad McConkey. Everyone wants to talk about the rookie, and he could have a really good rookie season. People are talking about Quentin Johnston, who could step up, maybe be that guy that he was supposed to be. But Josh Palmer is the best today, is the best receiver uh, in that offense, a guy that has to stay healthy, but uh, I think pretty underrated. Has that connection with Justin Herbert. The connection really isn't there with anyone else, so I think that's key. And there will be a connection, but that chemistry is already there. A guy that can play outside or play in a slot. Pretty good hands, obviously. A good build to him. Can make the contested catches. Could you know? Could, could go after the catch as well. I, I think he's... He's their best receiver today. People really aren't talking about it. I think he'll be super, super productive this year, but has to stay healthy, uh, you know, and, and we'll see how much he shows up. You know, some pressure here, being that veteran guy that knows the quarterback, that knows this this team. Uh, can he be that guy? I, I think he can be. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of people talking about McConkie, a lot of pressure with him. Uh, they traded up to get him, and he has to really show out in his rookie year as well. But how about Derwin James? We talked about it a little bit, this this new defense under Jesse Minter. I think Derwin James can play very well, very well under him. Is another, another one of those guys like Justin Herbert, like they've been great. They've been really good, but like you're left wanting a little bit more under Brandon Staley from these guys. Like they should be elite because we see the flashes. Derwin James, another one of those guys. And um, I, I think he'll fit this defense very well. I think we'll see a lot of cover three with Gilman almost taking the responsibility of the deep third and the corners having the other thirds. Uh, and then so typically in that defense, your strong safety will come up and it'll be a, a key factor in different situations uh, in the box. So I think Derwin James will be highlighted in that defense. I think they'll um, they'll get a lot out of him. I think they can play him in the slot as well, cover from the slot. We'll see that, um, which has been big, and you know that Michigan defense as well. Looking at that, so Derwin James could only, like it's weird because it's like he already like he could have a breakout year. It's kind of a weird breakout candidate because we already know he's great and he could be elite. Uh, but he he can he could be a legit breakout candidate this year, and then for some of the similar reasons, Justin Herbert is up here. Of course, uh, this guy is a great quarterback that has elite flashes, and if you want to call him elite, I'm not really going to argue with you on that. Like he has moments that you go like I don't think anyone else besides Patrick Mahomes can do that. Like you have those moments, and of course, right now. It is fair to say other quarterbacks have been a little more consistent with winning games, so maybe therefore they are better if you were to rank quarterbacks based on like today. But there are moments where Herbert does things that those guys that are great, that are elite, cannot do. Like he's like in the conversation of Patrick Mahomes with some of the throws that he makes. Um, you know, so we know he has that talent in him. He has that arm talent, he has the build, you know, he has the toughness, physicality. Um, and then you factor in 
that I think the coaching staff was holding him back a little bit, and he was still playing great. Now he has a good coaching staff. Uh, you factor in the offensive line let him down at times. It felt like in crucial moments. Now the offensive line's complete. It should be legit in this new scheme that Harbaugh is bringing, Harbaugh and company is bringing here. So that kind of makes you think, man, Justin Herbert, could be scary like he's already kind of scary good but he could be scary good like an MVP candidate like if he plays to the best of his abilities with the receivers that he has or people doubting him like he could be a legit MVP candidate so that's a guy that we're watching can he take that next step in that there's only one step really to go Um, can he close out games too so we will see uh, some games to watch here. Uh, I like the Cardinals game week seven. I think both teams could struggle to stop the run. So that'd be like my negative questions with the Chargers. Looking at defense, they do have some holes on paper with that defense. The interior defensive line look, looks pretty rough. Um, somebody's gonna have to step up the linebacker unit. Eh, you know they they could be okay. We'll see how good Colson plays as a rookie. He's familiar with this defense, but mainly that interior defensive line. Um, you know that, that that it could hurt the run defense. And the run defense has not been good as as it's been. You know, uh, as it is, I should say, in recent years uh, with the Chargers. So the run defense could struggle a little bit. I think the Cardinals could also struggle. They struggled last year, but those two teams, uh, I think, got good coaching staffs and they very much improved. So them going against each other, I think that game will be a, a physical run fest because they're going to try to expose the other team's weakness. So uh, and they do have quarterbacks that can make those splash plays at any time so I think that should actually should be a very interesting game uh, I like the Bengals game in week 11 a team that you know again the Chargers biggest worry for me if I look at the whole team biggest worry is stopping a run um, you know interior defense line specifically but the Bengals are a team that's going to live and die by the past they actually even de- devalue the running back position a little bit more this offseason um, so that is a team that I think the Chargers match up pretty well against like I think they'll have the game plan to not stop, but maybe slow the passing game of the Bengals um, in the Chargers passing game. Uh, you know, it could have some success in this game. So I actually should be a really good game. The Chargers match up against a heavyweight in the AFC pretty well there. And look at the Ravens, uh, Harbaugh and uh, Greg Roman revenge game, you know, and then maybe Minter running like a McDonald uh, type of defense. So some familiarity I guess could be the word you know that you know in that game for both sides so that should be a very interesting game uh as well so Lamar Jackson that offense versus Greg Roman very very curious to see how that unfolds um but yeah the Chargers should be a very interesting team this year definitely one to watch but fans takes uh astronaut rushing attack with the large Rome Harbaugh Roman offense I mean yeah the run game should be good you know we did talk about that it really shouldn't be a run first team unless they are playing teams that they can expose because of that which is great uh but so I what I didn't touch out touch on how good the run game could be yeah I think teams are going to fear Justin Herbert still and uh this looking at the scheme the offensive line they got a couple good running backs if they're healthy they sh- it should be a really solid run game Um, So a little more consistent than it was in the past. So that's a positive. Will receiver room step up? I think it has to. I think it will. But at the end of the year, I think we're going to be going. It's just still not good enough. Shouldn't be a surprise that I'm saying that. Herbert to elevate his skilled players and play more clutch football. Um, O-line can, uh, you know, that's the next one. So um, I think we kind of touched on that. I think Herbert steps up even more. I think he's going to make some guys that are average look a lot better than that. O-line consistency, that's the only question. It looks really good on paper. We think it could be very, very good, but how consistent will it be because it's a new scheme, new face, and a young, young, uh, somewhat raw but still great player in Joe Alt. I only say raw because he hasn't been playing the position a long time, but he was the best in, in college football already, so he's not that raw. Um, Zion Johnson's a guy that we think could be really solid, but and he's had his moments, but he's been a little inconsistent, nothing too extreme. So, yeah, that's a good point. Like they, he, I think what Antron's trying to say is, like, yeah, on paper they look good. They got really good players, but how consistent will it be? That's a good question. Depth concerns all along the defense. Yeah, there's not a – ton I guess there's they they drafted fairly well so some young players they've added so those guys might have to step up as the key depth piece Colson and Perriman do you Perriman's had some good play throughout his career I guess that was a good addition because he stopped the run pretty well he's a tackling machine and that's kind of what they needed behind that D tackle group and Colson so um how good would that group be? I can see different scenarios there because they kind of fit what they've needed what they've mi- been missing there's a connection with Colson in this Michigan uh, coaching staff. 
you know, same defense he's going to be playing in. Um, it's not like the sexiest name on paper. Uh, they have their hands full behind a maybe the weakest interior defensive line in football, so that makes it tougher. So it's kind of up in the air uh, on how they'll perform. Derwin James returning to form. Um, yeah, we kind of touched on that. Definitely think he can do that. I think he fits this defense very well. I think it's going to highlight him. There's going to be more opportunities in this type of defense. Cam Sullivan, receiver, and tight end rotation. Uh yeah, it'll be a big big question. Who steps up as second target behind Palmer? So he's on board with Palmer being the first guy. Uh, but yeah, there's a number of guys that could step up there. The tight end room, you know, kind of became uh, you know a little bit deep there. Um, I think we'll see a lot of a lot of two tight end sets. Um, you know, we, we could see different guys at times because I think Parham's kind of viewed as the third tight end right now, but because they did bring in Disley uh, and uh, Hayden Hurst, who are pretty solid veteran guys so um, yeah we'll see how they the different that can be another thing they can give so many different looks of being with a big rotation I guess in that category um, uh, where, where am I at here offense without Allen Williams and Eckler uh, yeah I mean Williams has been hurt so much I know he's a massive contested catch target on the outside and Eckler really struggled last year I thought uh, I don't think they're going to miss those guys that much. I think they'll miss Keenan Allen quite quite a bit, obviously. Um, do receiver struggles in coaching changes lead to a more run focused offense? Yeah, that was the kind of a question I had too. I don't think so, but I do think they'll take advantage on teams they believe cannot stop the run, and they may look like that type of team. Uh, but it is a good question, something to watch for this year. Take they finish second in the division, but don't make the playoffs behind teams with better rosters. Could definitely see that. Um, Adam, can Herbert make plays with McConkey or make players like McConkey really good? I I think so. A, a combination of this this system, this offense with um, Herbert, yeah, I definitely think he'll elevate some guys' play. Can run heavy offense work with Gus, who's decent, and Dobbins, who can't stay healthy? I, I don't think they'll be that run heavy like I touched on. I think there will be some some games. I think they have a good uh, committee that because um, you know, Vidal actually is pretty underrated out of Troy. And then Spiller's still there, so I think I think that we'll see a I think we'll see a big rotation with this group, uh, potentially elite offensive tackle duo. Yeah, we kind of touched on that a little bit. I, I could see it. They got to progress a little bit, both of them, Slater and Alt. But I could see it. Defense can be solid if healthy with players like Mac Bosa, rookie Colson, but Rundy can hold them back. I agree with that. There's talent there that probably won't be held back. I mean, Mac wasn't really held back last year, uh, but there are weak spots like that. Rundy take Chargers finish seven and ten. Due to abysmal run D, um, McConkey has the most receiving yards. Vidal is second in rushing. I can see, I can see all that. I would like to think they'll be better than seven and ten, but run D is a worry. McConkey could be very good if he's healthy. I can see yeah, Vidal being the second um, in rushing just because of injuries. The other guys, I think they're going to mix it up a bit. He's a little underrated. Uh, there's some good ones here from Freddie, or or uh, it's not Freddie. Uh, Fed or Fede, uh, how how much can the defense improve with Jesse Minter and how his system can benefit Derwin James, who had a step down under Staley? Yeah, we touched on that a little bit, but it's a really good point. It's going to be a little bit different of a defense. I, I'm more mixing up coverages, not being predictable, not sticking in one thing. I, I do think if I had to pick or if I, you know, educated guess, I, I think more mostly cover three, but I do think they'll mix it up. Could be you know what Michigan was doing, what McDonald was doing when he was at Michigan, when he was at in the Ravens, because Minter, um, you know, stepped up after him, uh, which is a lot of mixing up, a lot of simulated pressures, uh, you know, a lot of playmaking ability. So, and I again, I think Derwin James and his play style, which is going to be you know, like a rover type player uh, at the strong safety, going to be do it all, kind of let him go free at times, not playing free safety, but go free on, you know, trust your instincts. I, I think we'll see a lot from Derwin James because of that. Uh, how do you think the Chargers' great defensive end room will play with a not great defensive tackle room? I don't think that it'll, it'll affect the edge rushers, but obviously... Uh, yeah, so I, I don't think it's like because the D tackles are playing bad or if they're bad because we, we kind of expect them to be one of the worst in football. I don't think if they do that, that'll mean the edge rushers are playing lesser than to their ability. I don't think that'll be the case. Uh, but yeah, kind of a good question. Do they mix in more edge rushers? 
Um, There's like Tui Pelotu, Bosa, and Mac play all at the same time. There is some physicality. Like Bosa could slide in at times. Tui Pelotu could slide in at times. Um, he did drop a little bit of weight going into last year, and he was fantastic his rookie year. But these are those two guys have been like physical guys in their past that could line up a hair inside from outside of the tackle. So could we see some of that? Um, or as swimmer, could we could be a oh, this is an interesting one. Could be a legit copy of the 2021 line. So the lines that started to come up. Alt could have a Sewell uh, level impact, definitely could. McConkey could have a uh, Amon or St. Brown level impact. Could see that, you know, I think St. Brown's a little tougher, a little more physical, and just better right now, which is fair to say. But McConkey, uh, guy that can play inside and out, and this is pretty tough after the catch, you know, finds lanes after the catch. Um, just a guy that just gets open and catches the football, you know, great hands. Uh, so I could, I guess I could see that in a way. Should struggle early and get better towards the second half of the season. I could definitely see that. It is an interesting, I think, pretty good take. So are they going to take that s- some sort of path like that? The Lions, like the Lions did. Uh, from Payne, would Roman force Herbert into a lot of RPOs, even though Herbert isn't as agile as Lamar Jackson? It's not going to be exactly the same offense at all. I think people are kind of expecting that. It really won't be. I definitely think we'll see some RPO looks. Um, but it, it's just not It's not going to be a Lamar. It's different. Justin Herbert offense is just, uh, no matter who the coaching staff is, is much different than Lamar. Uh, Justin Herbert, much different than Lamar Jackson offense. You know, the offenses run through quarterbacks as they should. Um, for most teams, they do. Uh, some teams, even with good quarterbacks, you know, coordinators kind of insist at running through them and their style. But and think about this: when Roman, uh, when uh, Greg Roman was there in Baltimore, I should say, you know, did he run exactly like his playbook in his style, like exactly be? before he had Lamar Jackson. No, of course you have to tweak things, add things because you have Lamar Jackson. You have to get the most out of your quarterback strength. So that wasn't necessarily like full uh, Greg Roman offense. It was Lamar Jackson offense with Greg Roman's philosophy behind it and his tweaks to it. So to you know, so he's going to come in and he's not going to go, well, I have to run the same offense I ran with Lamar Jackson. No, he's going to run his takes on a Justin Herbert offense. So uh, they're not going to waste Justin Herbert's talent. So that, I think that's where people kind of get confused because Greg they, they kind of put Greg Roman running Lamar Jackson's offense. He did that at one point, so he's going to run that same offense. It's just it's just not really how it works. And there are some coaches out there that probably do that. They they kind of just stick to their, you know, they, they're a little stubborn to go away what they know. But And Greg Roman might be like that, but what what like his offense was a thing before Lamar Jackson. He tweaked some things for Lamar Jackson which makes some sense. Uh, then Monty, I think people are underrated. Quentin Johnston, just because he was from a weak class and overshadowed by Zay Flowers, was pretty... Well, I don't know if that's why they're underrating him. Like, he was disappointing. He didn't really get on the field a whole lot. There was good receivers, you know, on that team with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. He did drop the ball a bit. Um, so I don't know if that's the reason. Uh, but... Th- he could be being underrated, like doubt. I maybe I don't know if he's being underrated. I think maybe being doubted going forward could be the right word. Uh, was pretty sick at TCU. He was hands and contested catches. Yeah, my issue on that was he did have some ridiculous catches and some ridiculous contested catches. But if you watch every snap, um, he wasn't attacking the ball at the highest point. He was kind of using the body a little bit. He did still have some questionable drops. Um, so that was kind of my issues with him, and we kind of saw those things kind of. Um, show up a little bit last year, uh, but he still was a really good receiver at TCU and that could come out, come out a little bit more. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if he steps up kind of a must. I think he'll play. He has to play better. You can't play any worse, uh, which it's not like he played off. It was more of, he didn't get on the field. So he was doing something wrong to not be able to get on the field as much, but he did have some key drops. It felt like in key moments but we'll see uh, definitely a guy that I think could play a little bit better and could be more of a factor than people realize so um, yeah I, again I don't think it's more of the case that people are underrating him I think it's that maybe they're just doubting his future based off one year which not is, isn't really fair but we will see uh, but yeah comment which team I should do next let me know any any more thoughts on the Chargers any other teams in the comments as well make sure to follow our Twitter to play along links pinned in the comments for that anything else our sponsors Liquid IV code GOAT for percentage off that is going to do it for this one thanks for watching goodbye